Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been amazing so far. Holy crap, the announcements, the leaks, they all just hit us last night. Everything is going down. Paris Overwatch League, the entire roster was announced. Besides one, there might be this mystery player that we're trying to find out. That's also not it though, guys. We are going to be covering the Atlanta Overwatch League team because they announced their brand today. It is going to be the Atlanta Reign. Now, the funny thing about this is that they didn't actually announce it first. Blizzard, the Overwatch League app, accidentally leaked it and forced Atlanta to push the announcement super early. It was absolutely wild. I'll tell you guys the story of that. We're going to go over the entire Overwatch League Paris roster. The funny thing is, I did kind of leak every single player on that team already, but it is official now, guys. But that's not it, guys. We're also going to be taking a look at those Shanghai Dragons players that were finally announced. Now, as most of you guys know who watched my daily videos yesterday, I was talking about the Shanghai Dragons roster, kind of confused where it was at. They said it would be on the 22nd, and I guess it was on the 22nd. They barely made it by like an hour in Pacific time. I barely missed it, but that's fine. We're going to be covering the entire Shanghai Dragons roster. It's a mixture of Kong Du and then two players, one from Toronto Esports and one from Lucky Future Zenith. And then in the last part of the video, guys, we are taking a look at the Toronto Overwatch League team. Apparently, they have also been leaked. Their branding is going to be Toronto Venom, and it was leaked on 4chan. I don't know if it's true. There's rumors about it being true. We're going to take a look at it, what the logo looks like, what the skins look like. You're going to find all this information on the video today, guys. So if you want to stay updated on anything Overwatch League news related, this is your channel, guys. I upload content every single single day you'll never miss out on the news turn post notifications on and now without further ado let's hop into this video all right and to begin this video off guys let's go ahead and take a look at the paris overwatch league team because they did announce every single player and the role that they will be playing there is something to note though in the picture which you guys can see right now welcome to paris you can see all their players but in the back left, there is this mystery guy. We don't know who he is. We're assuming he is going to be another player that they're going to sign. They just haven't announced it yet. To be honest, I'm not really too sure who he is. I'm guessing it's either going to be an off tank or support player since they do have two main tanks already and then four DPS players, possibly two off tanks. But Nico is listed as a DPS on this, which we're going to take a look at. But let's go ahead and just jump straight into that announcement. This is what Paris Overwatch League posted on Twitter. Stand with us, Europe. Here come our players for the 2019 Overwatch League season. And then, of course, the players listed down below under their roles as the following. Soon. DPS player, mostly hit scan, but he did mention that he wanted to focus on flexing to other heroes and proving to the fans that he can play more than just Tracer and Widowmaker in Season 2. He left the LA Valley in order to play for this Paris Overwatch League team. It's where he's from. I'm excited to see him here. Moving on to the next player, we have Shadowburn, a more projectile-based player, so Lefera, Genji, Hanzo, Junkrat, stuff like that. He played for Philadelphia Fusion in Season 1. He eventually did hit the bench in order for EQO to start over him but he's a solid player and I'm so happy to see him on a European only base team and I can't wait to see him start in season two now moving on to the next DPS player listed we do have Nico GDH and as I mentioned earlier he is also a off tank player so it's kind of interesting seeing him list as a DPS this could mean that that mystery player could be an off tank but I wouldn't be surprised if Nico does play a lot of diva a lot of Zarya a lot of that flex role on this team and Nico has proved in the past that he is a really really good off tank player specifically on that diva so when he was on eagle gaming this team was renowned for playing goats they were one of the best teams in the world at it i think they could stand up to the korean teams like runaway kong du panthera and even beat them on it it's honestly the only comp they played and nico was on 24 7 diva duty and then going into the world cup team france kind of adopted this style since they had a lot of the eagle gaming players and soon stated that nico was the key to this comp without him on diva him calling and playing how he plays this comp wouldn't come together the way it does and they wouldn't be as good as they are on it without him so I really would expect Nico coming into this team playing a lot of off tank possibly he could be on that DPS I think they kind of just listed him there as that rather than them actually just considering him a hard DPS player 
But time will eventually tell. Nico is definitely a solid player. He is also French, so he's playing for his hometown, his home country, which is awesome. That's something I wish I could do in the Overwatch League. So congratulations to him. And let's go ahead and move on now. Now moving on to the very last DPS player they listed, it's going to be Donye. He played for Team Poland multiple times in the World Cup and also really solid Overwatch contenders teams. So that's going to be their first four players and all of their DPS players. I think it's a solid lineup so far, especially Shadowburn and Soon. They are going to tear it up as a duo. I cannot wait to see them, guys. I am so hyped about that. And now moving on, the next two players they listed on this announcement is going to be their supports. And starting off with their very first support player, we have Hip, who is really solid. He comes from Eagle Gaming, where he just got first place in Overwatch Contenders. He is also from France, just like Soon, so he is playing under his home country and his home city, which I mentioned for Nico as well, but I also want to say, playing for your home country in Overwatch League is huge. Not a lot of players really get to do this. Soul Dynasty does, and for all the USA teams, it's kind of different since there are so many of them it would kind of be more like playing for your own city but with there only being one overwatch league team in france and it is paris all these guys on this roster it's gotta feel amazing for them being able to not only compete in the overwatch league but being able to play for your own country that's incredible and i'm sure they will not take it for granted and that's going to be it for hip let's go ahead and move on now and talk about their second and last support player they announced it's going to be cruz who comes from toronto esports now personally i was really surprised cruz didn't make it into season one he's an extremely veteran player he's been around since the game very started and he played for one of the best teams during beta not only that but he has proven himself constantly on every single team he has ever played for e united reunited and now Toronto Esports, who's finally got his time on the Paris Overwatch League team. I'm a big fan of this. I think it's a strong pickup, and I can't wait to see what he does. Now, the interesting thing is, they have two support players listed here in their announcement. But that mystery guy very well could be a support. Based on what they announced here, they have four DPS players, so I highly doubt it's going to be a DPS player. Even if Nico eventually ends up being an off tank, they still have three solid DPSs, and I think they're going to stick with Soon and Shadowburn being the starters. I don't see it being a DPS. Moving on to the supports, obviously there's only two here, so it makes sense that this mystery man could be a flex or main support player. As for main tanks, which we're about to hop into, there's two of them, and then for off tanks, we do have one, but possibly Nico being an off tank, I feel like it's less likely to be an off tank and we're more likely to get a support player, which has been rumored to be wins. So that's something to stay tuned and updated on, guys. I am doing my research. He did trial for the Paris Overwatch League team. He said it himself. We're just going to have to wait and see. Now moving on to their main tank, starting off with Ben Best, who also comes from Team France. Again, another French player competing under his country. It's going to be huge. I feel like this is a great advantage for this roster. He also also competed for some really solid European contenders teams like Young and Beautiful and Gamers Origin. I think Ben Best is going to be a solid main tank. Not too sure if he's going to get the start or if their next main tank is going to get the start, which is LH Cloudy, who competed for Team Giganti. This guy's not as known. He was signed to Florida Mayhem's Academy and Overwatch League team as a two-way player. But before the deal was done, he was offered a full-time position on the Paris Overwatch League team. And Florida, they just couldn't deny him that opportunity, so they let him go over to Paris. So congratulations to him. These two main tanks look really solid. I can't wait to figure out who is going to be the starter. Now moving on to the very last player, it's going to be their off tank, and it's Finzi. Finzi played for the LA Valiant during Season 1 briefly. He didn't get too much start time, but he was on the roster, and I guarantee you he learned a ton from Space, who is one of the best Western Divas in the world. He is the best Western Diva in the world. Let me correct that, boys. So I expect Finzi to probably be the main starting off tank, and then Nico, he'll probably come in on the side, play some off tank, play some DPS, he'll flex. And that's going to be it for the roster, guys. And now we get to the part where we talk about how good I think they're going to be. So far, their roster looks really solid. They have pieces in every role that have proven themselves in Overwatch history. So because of this, I think it will come down to the coaching staff. Are they going to be able to bring this team together, create that family-like atmosphere that we've seen on like Philadelphia Fusion, and coach these guys individually and build these guys up into some of the best players in the league. Sure, they have the talent, but having the talent isn't going to just get you there. We've seen the Dallas feel in Season 1. They definitely had the talent, but without a strong coaching staff around them, they fell apart and the team collapsed. So if this Paris Overwatch League team has a strong coaching staff that can build good strategy, teach these players how to work together, I do think they can place in the top 6th through 10th, either barely making the playoffs or barely missing the playoffs. So personally, I think it's 
it's going to come down to the coaching staff. Let me know down below if you guys agree or disagree. Do you think this roster is going to be one of the best in the league or one of the worst? Let's go ahead and move on now and talk about the Atlanta Overwatch League team because they have officially announced their brand and they didn't do it in a way that we expected. It came out of nowhere in the middle of the night. And that's because last night, around 3 in the morning, this was posted on the Overwatch League official app. This picture showing Atlanta Rain with a Lucio skin and a Zarya skin. Everybody started going nuts, it was immediately on Reddit, and it was pretty clear that this was an accident. And because of it, Atlanta was like, alright, we gotta push it out guys, let's push the official announcement, we are Atlanta Rain, and they posted this on Twitter. All roads lead home, your rain begins today, Atlanta, hashtag let it rain. I would play the video for you guys because it's really hype and it's awesome, but unfortunately it does have copyright, so, so if you guys do want to see the video, go to Overwatch League Atlanta's Twitter, they have it posted there, follow them, this team is going to be awesome, they have Defran on it, oh my god, I'm so hyped guys, finally one of the brandings being officially announced, this is so cool, I love their skins, I love the look of their logo, the Atlanta rain, it rolls off the tongue and sounds amazing. Let me know down below if you guys like or dislike this team's logo, branding, whatever it is let me know down below I love it let's move on now and talk a little bit about the Shanghai Dragons because Shanghai Dragons did announce six new players to their rosters going into season two and I could say right now confidently these guys will not go 0 and 28 they will win a game and I think they will win a lot of games Shanghai Dragons will go from one of the worst teams to probably one of the best in my opinions because these are some solid pickups let's go ahead and go over them real quick first we have DPS player DM he comes from Lucky Future Zenith and is widely considered the best player to ever play in Chinese contenders he's getting paid 200k to play for the Shanghai Dragons, he is going to pop off and prove he is worth that money. Then moving on to the next four players, these guys all come from Kongdu Panthera. We have D. Dean and Young Jin who are both DPS players, and then we have Luffy and Koma who are both support players. These four players prove that they are a great tank and support line in Overwatch Korea Contender Season 2, going all the way to the finals in a Game 7 clash against Runaway. Unfortunately, they did lose but they are amazing players, and again, these guys will get Ws going into Season 2. Their last player is going to be Guardian, who is an off-tank, and he comes from Toronto Esports. And that is going to top this roster off, guys. And again, guys, I don't know how many times I can say it, they are going to be so much better than Season 1. I cannot wait. Let me know down below if you guys like these new pickups by the Shanghai Dragons. Do you think they'll be much improved, or do you think it's kind of going to be a flop? And now let's go ahead and move on to the last topic and take a look at this leak coming from 4chan about the Toronto Overwatch League team. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this image that was plastered all over Reddit and supposedly is coming from 4chan. It says Toronto Venom and the logo is a V-shaped snake and these skins, oh my god, just pure black and white look so damn cool. Now the big reason why I believe this could be true is because the owners of Toronto Overwatch League are partly Splice and Splice's logo is a snake and they've always been into snake type things. So this is so realistic to me and I feel like this is definitely going to be their logo and branding going into season two. If it is not, I will be absolutely crushed because, oh my god, I, I can't get over how cool this looks, boys. Let me know down in the comments if you guys hope it's Toronto Venom. Do you like the branding? Did you like this video? Be sure to drop a like on it. Subscribe to my channel for more daily content. That is going to be it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'm out of here. Peace.